Airplanes truly are one of society's greatest inventions, and we don't do enough justice to look into the creation of these metallic bird beasts. Because the truth is, there are some weird planes, and some weird parts of plane history. So, let's dive into this history, even though dive is likely the opposite word you want to hear when the topics of planes is discussed. And where else to start with planes? than to contemplate the starting itself. How on Earth did they come up with something to get them off Earth? How batshit crazy was the brainstorm for these things until one finally worked? Is it like an anime where the answer conveniently stumbles into your lap? Or is it like SoundCloud, where there's thousands of failures for every one success? Where do you begin? I would assume a bird is your first basis for design, but what kind of bird are we talking? We described something cool like a falcon, or did they have uh, flamingos on the list? How close were we to flamingo planes? I need to know. Because it must have been built from there. Where can it go from there, though? Do you really expect to build wooden feathers on your thing? Do you know how aerodynamic the beak is? Are you slapping some strats on a tube and throwing it off a cliff with your ex-wife inside as a test subject? Leaving the topic of accidents that cannot be proven in a court of law as manslaughter, do you flap the wings on your first attempt? Cause I imagine some fellow in an old pilot's cap flapping the wings of a plane, thinking he's the first man to fly, and next thing he knows he's ass up in a tree with the wings bonking him in the head over and over. And who discovered jet fuel worked? Cause I'm imagining they tried a coal engine first, and a bunch of coal was being thrown into the fire, desperate to stay in the air, and the plane smokes, which is commonly a bad sign. Or maybe they tried manual power with an elliptical that ended up looking like Fred Flintstone. Or maybe they just found jet fuel at your annual things that can't melt steel beams convention. And then we have the genius, I probably shouldn't say that in a sarcastic tone, we have the genius who came up with propellers on the front. Who looked at a bird and then at their son's little spin beanie hat and said, you know what? That's clearly what we need to make this work more efficiently. Put a windmill on the bird's face. And once that's done, why not do the most American thing you can and see how big you can make it? Planes on their own are already massive, but what about the biggest plane? The Hindenburg doesn't count. And not because it's a blimp, but because I'm not counting graveyards. The big boy of planes is named the Antonov AN-225. This plane is a massive behemoth that has the number 225 in reference to the elemental number of uranium. That's not true at all. But you believed it for a second, didn't you? That's because it is actually true. The massive plane is sporting a 260 to 290 feet wingspan. I couldn't get an accurate number looking it up, so I figure they just eyeballed it because they didn't want to measure that whole thing with a custom tape measure. Yeah, it looks about 260, 270. The Antonov can hold a seating list of about 868 passengers. Guess they could spare the room to make that a whole 870, but they needed that two-seat room extra space to hold all the tape measures they hid, so they didn't have to do the measurements. And even with that secret treasure trove of tape measures, the plane weighs a titanic amount, 628,300 pounds. Look, I'm running out of adjectives to use here, okay? That much weight is equal to just under three Statues of Liberty and over 3,000 Usain Bolts. That's right, I'm bringing back old jokes. And with the speed of this Usain Bolt, I mean plane, is 528 miles per hour, or 850 kilometers per hour for anyone who speaks a reasonable measurement system. You never see British people hiding their measurement equipment. Granted, they're too busy with imperialism to actually measure the land they're taking, but at least they don't have to remember the number 5,280 for no reason. If we're going to talk about the biggest plane, then logic would dictate 
and my brain trying to pad out this script would dictate that we need to talk about the smallest plane they've ever made, not including paper, we're not counting that shit here. The smallest, or should I say small lists, since they smartly made a backup, are called the Star Bumble B1 and 2. Makes sense that they would want another one, cause I think stripping a plane of all of its necessary pieces, you might want to have a test run on that. The 8 foot 10 inch long and 5 foot 6 inch wingspan is so tiny that most Hollywood actors, barring Tom Cruise, are taller than its wingspan, and so dangerous that most Hollywood actors, barring Tom Cruise, would ever get in the damn thing. And they shouldn't. I guarantee the main reason why this thing only has one seat is because they wanted to minimize the casualties. Yes, it may have been to minimize the plane itself, but I would say the second seems more likely. Cause all that downsizing leads to this skybound coffin weighing in at 396.8 pounds. You know it's small when you have to weigh to points of a degree. You don't do fractions of a year after you turn 18, so this plane is quite literally a baby plane. And as a tiny little plane, it can only go about 150 miles per hour, which makes it the second worst New York to Tokyo flight right behind Spirit Airlines. Quite a slow flight, but I originally wanted to try and talk about the fastest plane there is. However, I realized it's far more interesting to talk about the slowest and see if any plane manufacturer is willing to claim that title. And it turns out, one is, at least for jet-propelled aircrafts, the M-15 holds that title for slowest jet aircraft ever made. Which, to be fair, the M-15 sounds like a gun name, and I wouldn't trust a rifle to fly me from Newark to Kent. That is, other than the United Airlines AR-15. The M-15, once again, not the rifle, is 41 feet 9 inches long from nose to tail, and it has a 73 feet 3 inch wingspan. About the same width as Meryl Streep's acting range, but about as long as 100 times Amy Schumer's acting range. And for how decently sized the plane is, it can only hold two people. And if I'm going to be on the slowest plane there ever was, I at least like another person to play I Spy with. I Spy with my little eye, an old man overtaking us on the sidewalk. The two factors contributing to a plane's slowness are its weight and its drag. Its weight comes in at 6,812 pounds, although that's quite small for planes, and his drag isn't that great either. I can't imagine him ever making it past the audition for RuPaul. And now the moment we've been waiting for, the speed of the world's slowest plane. The M15 is capable at moving at a max of 200 kilometers per hour, or 120 miles per hour, which does sound very fast for a car, but when it comes to planes, it's the equivalent of going to the Olympics and doing the worm across the finish line. But in all honesty, for someone to learn how to run, there needs to be someone willing to do that worm to get the ball rolling. And with planes, those worms were known as the Wright Brothers. Or as I call them, maniacs. Utter maniacs. Obviously, there needed to be someone who decided to try and learn how to fly, but that doesn't disqualify them from being utterly crazy for doing so. They're just the first people willing to be crazy, and that's not bad. And I hope that they were also the inventors of parachutes, cause if they made the planes and didn't think of a don't freaking die bag, then I think they may have deserved whatever Icarusian retribution they got. There is one thing about the Wright brothers that concerns me other than their aerodynamic suicidal tendencies, it's the lack of runways. Must have taken forever just to find a long enough patch of grass where they could take off from. But what if there wasn't anywhere to land? That's why you need a parachute. Or even better, a jetpack. 
They could build that, right? It's not that hard to make a jetpack. All you need is an old backpack, a few fire extinguishers, a match, and a safe space for none of the middle school teachers to see you. That's how I did it. Do you reckon the Wright brothers wanted to go crazy with it? Like, add a bunch more wings onto it? How many is too many? Could you do a plane with four wings? Eight? A hundred? Man, I'm really ruining for my future self who has to machinimate this. With the infinite amount of wings, they could all be going around the plane, so it would be best to move them up and have propulsion by having a bunch of them spinning. Wait, that's a helicopter. Wait, how did they make helicopters?